Good morning, um, my name is Tatiana. Uh, the title for this morning is Everyone's an Idiot But Me. I'm awesome. I know that sounds a bit off and um, we're gonna get into it in a second. Uh, I hope it doesn't sound like I'm whispering. If it does, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna pray first. Um, so thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and for giving us another opportunity to lay our idols down and to pick up our cross as you have not I'm sorry as you have instructed us to do. Uh, thank you for inviting us on our journey to get to know you and your ways. Please help us to remember that you are always good and that you always have our best interests at heart. Um, thank you for revealing your heart and nature to us as we continue to learn how to follow you. And I pray that you will remind us of all that you have for us when we are tempted to settle for less. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so I want to start off with road rage. Um, road rage is something, well, my hope, my plan is to just be as honest as I possibly can. And if you guys can, if anyone can relate um, to anything that I'm saying, that's great. Um, so I want to start with road rage. road rage. Road rage is something that I have struggled with for a long time, but not until like kind of recently, I've noticed that it's actually a very ugly behavior that needs to be fixed. And um, I didn't really notice it until I started, until I would be in the cars with other people that either have road rage or people that don't have it and they're like just cool, calm and collective. Um, and when I would be in the car with someone who does have road rage, that acts aggressive um, when driving, I would just be looking at them like they crazy. Like, yo, there's no way, there's no way I'm acting like this. And if it is, it has to got to stop like yesterday. Cause this is, this is not it and and i knew this is when i knew i had some screws loose is when i would be in the car with people who like are just fine non-reactive no no issue at all and so say somebody like doesn't use a signal light uh cut them off there's something dumb i'm in the passenger seat like um <laughs> you ain't just see that you you not mad at all like nothing no real and they're like no it's all cool it's not, it's, it's not that serious we it's not that deep and that just told me like yo i might have some issues that need to be tightened up on that need to be eradicated um and i mean you know i guess i, I was just convicted um and so when i think about people who um, have road rage or they drive aggressive. Um, I think of people who are always offended at what other people are doing, even when it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with you. Easily offended, you know, you don't know nobody. From, when you're on the road, you don't know who these people are. You don't even know what they look like. You just know that they drive in a way that you think is bothering you. Um, I think of people who, um, who have a problem extending grace to other people knowing that they would want that grace extended back to them if the situations were switched. Um, I think, And I think of people who have anger problems, who um, have areas um, in their lives, in their past lives, wherever, past, present, whatever, um, that have not been addressed, that, they're, that they've been frustrated and that has just, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, places where um, <clears throat> frustration and anger have just molded themselves um, into the hearts of these people. And um, being on the street is how they let that anger out. Um, I really hope that doesn't happen again. Um, and so I was looking up, I was looking up definitions and scriptures about anger. And um, the definition that I liked the most said um, that anger is an emotion characterized by antagonism towards someone or something that you feel has deliberately done you wrong. Emphasis on delib deliberately, because I'm going to come back to that. And um, I noticed also in the Bible, when it talks about anger, it, also, it always talks about another word. It's always associated with this other word, whether it's in the front or behind. Um, it is always associated with foolishness. And so I'm going to read um, Ecclesiastic 7, 9, if I don't take too long. And I'm not reading, <laughs> I'm not reading from the KJV. Um, this is the Amplified. 
Um, it says, do not eager, do not be eager in your heart to be angry for anger dwells in the heart of fools. And so I said, okay, let's be clear on what a fool is. Let's be clear about that. Um, and so when I looked up the definition of what a fool was, it said a fool is a person who acts unwisely or imprudently, a silly person. A silly or stupid person, a person who lacks judgment or sense. And we all know that road rage is a type of, you know, violent, angry behavior, right? So I, when I, after I read the definitions in the scriptures, I thought about the times where, you know, I'm in the car, I'm feeling justified and entitled for being irritated or angry at people and doing all this rah, rah, rah in the car. I don't know these people from a slice of bread. I don't know what they look like. I don't know how their day has been. I don't know anything about their life. But because they're doing something to inconvenience my small segment of the day while I'm driving, I feel entitled to be offended and angry. And while I feel like I have the right to act how I'm acting, God is straight up calling me a fool. And so when I read that, I was... It took a blow um, to my pride, obviously, because I don't want to feel like I'm wrong. I feel like I should be right. Somebody doing something stupid on the road, whether I know them or not, if it inconveniences me, I should have the right to feel offended. And I don't have the right to feel offended at all. Um, and a lot of it, I know I'm not the only person that acts like this. It doesn't have to be about driving. It don't have to be about anything re uh, road related. Um, we want pe We always want people with we always want to think that people are worse than us. We always um, want to be the victim. We always want to have somebody else to blame or to point the finger at. Um, we always want to think our intentions are pure and they're just completely not. Um, and when really, no matter what situation we walk into, whether it's the grocery store, whether we're driving, whether it's a drive through we should always go into these situations thinking, I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to be offended no matter what because it's not about me. It don't have nothing to do with me. I have to take myself out of the equation. Whether somebody gets smart with you in the drive through whether somebody's acting erratic in the grocery line, wherever you are, it is not about you. And so um, the definition of anger, when it says that deliberately, it's easy for us to always assume that when someone um, does something, whether it's something light, whether it's something super hurtful, when they do something to us that bothers us, it's very easy for us to believe that they did it deliberately. Because when they did it deliberately, that means that they're at fault. That means that we're here and they're here. I'm sorry the lighting's getting bad. That um, we give ourselves some false sense of importance. Um, we make ourselves feel like we are always, like we're always pure and our hearts are always in the right places. Um, we make ourselves feel like we're, these, like we're a good person and that we would never do that. And I can't stand hearing that these days because this is the thing. When I'm, when I'm um, driving and somebody is in the left lane and they're not driving as fast as I feel like they should be because they're in the passing lane, I will ride up on their bumper so that they can get out of my way. I'm not like, you know, like that, but I'm close enough to where they know I want them to get out of my way, right? Let somebody do that to me. Oh my gosh. Let somebody ride, ride up on my bumper real close. I go ballistic, like absolutely ballistic. And that don't make any sense in my brain. So I can write, I can write up on somebody. I can do something illegal to somebody else. But when somebody do something illegal to me, it's still wrong. So it's like in both situations, the other person is still the jerk. I'm always, I'm, everyone else is an idiot except me. I'm always this person. I'm always this guy. And y'all are always that guy. I'm over here, I'm up here, and y'all are always right here. I can do no wrong. And that don't make no sense to me. It don't make any sense to me. Because if we don't automatically always think that someone is doing something deliberately to get on our nerves, that's when we have to be quick to forgive. 
We have to be quick to extend grace. We have to be quick to humble ourselves and we have to be quick to take ourselves out of the equation. And we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. And I mean, it's not okay, but you're not the only one. I'm not the only one. Um, so there's another scripture that I wanted to read. Something that Paul said that I really, really like. And it is 1 Corinthians 4.3. Um, and it again, amplified, <laughs> um, and I'm gonna start with verse three and I'm gonna stop at five. Um, but as for me personally, it matters very little to me that I may be judged by you or any human court on this point. In fact, I do not even judge myself. I am aware of nothing against myself and I feel blameless, but I am not by this acquitted before God. It is the Lord who judges me. So do not go on passing judgment before the appointed time, but wait until the Lord comes for he will both bring to the light for he will both bring to light the secret things that are hidden in darkness and disclose the motives of the heart. And when I read it, I was like, yo, because I'm, I hope I'm not jumping around. But when we are when we are so easily offended by everything that somebody else does we're believing that we're better. We're believing that, hey, oh my God, I would never do that. And it's like, you, but you would though. Your heart is just as corrupt and deceptive as the next person. You ain't no better than nobody else. Um, God knows other people's motives. We don't. Even if someone really is doing something to intent, like intentionally hurt you, you don't know the full story. Okay, ha put that in the chat. Hashtag you don't know the full story. We don't know the full story. God knows other people's private motives. We don't. God knows our private motives. We don't. We st not, we don't even know how nasty our own heart is because we want to believe that we're up here. We can't trust ourselves and our judgments of other people because we don't know what they're thinking. We don't know their background. We don't know what motivated, what motivated them to do this, that, and the third. We don't know. And again, Paul is saying the same thing. I do not even judge myself. I am aware of nothing against myself and I feel blameless, but I am not by this acquitted. It is the Lord who judges me. Right now, I feel like I'm on middle ground with all my friends at the moment or I don't feel like I have any issues that doesn't mean that I'm innocent right now that doesn't mean that I'm free from guilt that doesn't mean that my slate is clean someone could very well be upset with me right now I just don't know because they haven't shared it with me that don't mean that I'm I'm I'm, I'm straight that I'm free um and so I want to go back to first Corinthians 4 I'm gonna start at verse 7 for who regards you as superior or what sets you apart as special? What do you have that you did not receive from another? And if in fact you received it from God or someone else, why do you boast as if you had not received it but had gained it by yourself? Uh, why do we do that? Okay, so when, again, people have oral rage. It's not just people. I'm just going to talk about that because that's what's re relevant to me. People who always so easily offended by everything don't ever want to humble themselves. They don't ever want to lay anything down. They don't ever want, they always want to point the finger at somebody else. They don't want to forgive people. They don't want to extend grace. And that's one of the most important things you got to do if you're going to, if you call yourself a follower um, of Christ. Um, we think we're entitled to keep anger and being offended at people. We think we're entitled to all those and it's foolish. It, it makes us think that we're more righteous than the next person. Um, and when we act like that, y'all, when we act like that, we're basically telling God, you know, what you did on that cross for me. Well, no, what you did on the cross for everybody else was fine, but I didn't need that. I came into this world perfect and pure without sin, without guilt. Um, my heart has always been pure. I'm a good person. And so what you did was cool for them, but I'm good because I'm straight. Everybody's an idiot but me. I'm good. No, thank you. No, thank you. 
thank you and no thank you and that that's how that is how we act and it's 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 not easy to you know detect especially when it's yourself that's acting like that um but if you don't grab and take hold of it it's not it's not going to be a fun ride for you and um I also, I don't want to like jump all over the place, but I also want to say that, you know, road rage is not something that's light. It's not a source of anything. It's not the cause of anything. It's a reflection of heart, of your heart. It's a, reflect, it's a reflection of what you got dealing, what you're dealing with on the inside, what you've been dealing with on the inside. Um, no one acts like that for no reason. Nobody acts like that for no reason. And it don't even have to be road rage. It can be, because I'm not just talking about people that drive aggressive in the car. I'm talking about uh, anything, anything that causes you to behave in a way that's really ugly and nasty. And whether a lot of people know, whether a few people know, you know, you know how you be acting. You know how you be doing. God knows as well. There's, you can't, you can't, you can, you might can fool people. Like I said, God knows other people's private motives. You may can fool other people um, thinking that you this and that and you just amazing, but you're not because the heart is not deceptive because it fools other people. It's deceptive because it fools me. Your heart is deceptive because it fools you into thinking that you are this grand, amazing, kind hearted soul and you're not. You're an idiot too. I say all this to say that I'm sorry, but you are an idiot too. And the more you understand that, the more you will be willing to listen to Jesus when he said, pick up your cross and follow me. And so what I'm saying is people who deal with deeply rooted stuff like road rage or something like that, it, it gets in the way of you being a true disciple and a follower of Jesus. And anything that gets in the way is an idol. And you can't hold, you can't pick up an idol and pick up your cross at the same time. You have to decide which one you're going to pick up and which one you're going to put down. You can't carry both. And so that's for you to decide what you're going to do. It's not up to the changed behavior of your parents, the changed behavior of a best friend or somebody you date in. It don't matter. It, no one, it has nothing to do with nobody else but you. And you have to decide. Um... And so that's what I have to decide every day, every single day, multiple times. When I get in the car and I start to get irritated, I have to choose. Are you going to act erratic or are you going to calm down and think about the other person? Is the other person, you know, scared to be on the road? Are they tired? Um, can they see? Do they have their glasses on? Um, you know, do they know where they're going? Stop. Are you going to are you going to stop? Uh, to think about the other person, or are you going to just continue to think about yourself and think that the world's revolved around you? Or are you going to keep thinking that everyone around you is stupid? I, hey, you got to pick one. And it's not just in the car. It's every day, all day long when you're dealing with people. All day long. No matter where you go. You can't run from it. Um, and yeah, all I wanted really to say is that you're the idiot too. And I'm sorry, but you know, we all got to deal with this. Um, so that's all I had. Um, I hope you guys took something away from this and I hope you have an amazing day.